Hey guys, I'm Paul from Urban Constrictors. So as a lot of you already know, I'm the UK distributor of RectiChip. So before I start this video, I want to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to JT, the owner of RectiChip, but also to Chris Wilford from Texas, who brought me and JT together. Without Chris, I wouldn't have been the UK distributor of RectiChip and me and JT would never have hooked up and got this over here. Maybe JT would have eventually, but I wouldn't have been a part of it. So a massive thank you to Chris and JT for this opportunity. So today I wanted to show you how I uh, prep RectiChip. Now it's very, very similar to Justin Cabelka's way, so I'm not gonna say it's my way or anything like that, but it is slightly different to what I've seen Justin and other people do it. Now there's loads of different ways you can do it. For people who's only got one or two snakes, I would recommend you just unpackage the block, put it in a container, and then just pour some water uh, from a jug or a kettle, what's just warm, warm water. So dial into the, the temperatures I speak about. So warm water, leave it for five or 10 minutes, let it activate, let it swell, and just, just start to crumble it down, take what you need out for that day. Now you can prep it all and then store it, but store it in a non-airtight uh, container, preferably leave the, the lid off so the rectorship can dry out and at least breathe. So then you get no build up or uh, condensation. So you want it to breathe, dry out, and then when you're ready to use it, just rehydrate it to the, to the, um, to the amount of hydration you need for your animals. So I'm gonna show you how I do it when I'm gonna use uh, the full block. And I recently converted all 200 snakes to rep ship, so I'm really pleased about doing. And I went through, I think it was seven blocks. I should have really counted it, but I didn't. So I've got two blocks here. So this container isn't spotlessly clean because all six or seven Repti chips from yesterday and the day before had been processed in it. But because it's a clean product and it was a clean tub with clean water to start with, I'm not gonna go ahead and wash it out just for video purposes. Just like Billy Mutation Creations, he, he's talked about being real and, and showing stuff in its true light, not, not trying to make everything so prim and perfect. Now, unlike a lot of products, when you, when you unpackage RectiChip, you can throw the package on, on the floor because it's not full of nasty dust or anything. So, oh, you can't throw that on the floor though, because it's just too nice. So I'm just gonna pop that on the table. Lose the scissors. Right, so a couple of chips have fallen out, as to be expected. Now this water dialing into temperatures is tepid. And what I mean by tepid, and I know I said tepid on my last video, but my wife corrected me, it's tepid water. It means it's just off, it's just off cold. It's just slightly warm. It's very slightly warm. So to the touch, it's not cold water, but if you put it in warm water, you need to bring your time is dumped down because the hotter the water, the faster it reacts. So tepid works for me and I give it 10 seconds. That's it. So all we do is take the block and then we dunk it completely so the water drowns the block. I'm gonna try and do this the best I can in the space I've got, but basically dunk it in so it's fully submerged, count to 10, that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Right, the water actually dips below, let it drip a little bit, move it across and then flip it. So the bottom becomes the top. Kind of do it as fast as you possibly can, but if you do it slowly like I did, don't get rectitude everywhere. So I'm gonna bring the camera over. In fact, there's a few chips in there. It is what it is. You know, you can see the water is still clear. Um, the water is not dirty. It, it, it just tastes of water, it doesn't taste of anything. So give it some time. Now this is the bit I like the best. So you simply dry your hands off. The best bit, go for a coffee. I'll see you in five. Now, my initial plan was to just time lapse this, but I've decided to actually stand next to it so you can see that the time scale is very, very short. Now, as you can see, the block is, go is, is basically growing. And that's because the water that was uh, from the underside that really penetrated the block is starting to go through the block 
rather than just seep out the bottom. Now, when I do this typically, I get several uh, V70s side by side and I overlap them. I'll show you what I mean. I just put them on the floor, then I overlap them. So uh, this section is overlapping the next. And that's so I can just basically toss loads in and I don't have to worry about it falling down the edges. So what, at, at this point, I normally give rep shift about five, five or more minutes. The longer you give it, the more reaction you get. So it's at this stage, you don't really want to rush it. You kind of want to a plan ahead so obviously you can go get yourself a hot coffee but I must admit I'm not I'm not actually a fan of Starbucks I'm all about the cost of but my um, the guy who cuts my hair <laughs> gave me one of these the other day and they are so nice so a little shout out to Starbucks if you haven't tried these I cold coffee does not appeal to me in any way shape or form but these are absolutely gorgeous so give it about five or six minutes the longer the better. No, you don't need to go any more than 10, after 10 minutes, uh, not a lot's gonna really happen. But you can see the block is actually breaking down itself and crumbling away. So because I don't wanna rush this and do it wrong, I'm gonna step out and speed this up a little bit. But you'll see that at no point, uh, well, you probably won't see it, but at no point will I stop the video, I'll just speed it up. Now I didn't actually step out for long, I think it was about 30, 35 seconds, but I just thought I'd step back in and just talk about these t-shirts. I've got a new range of t-shirts out. We sold tons, but I'm sure there's still a few, a few of you that want them. They come in a bunch of different colors. The green ones sold out immediately, so I will get some more green ones made. So uh, if you want one, the 20 pounds, and I can ship anywhere in the world as long as you cover, it, cover you know, postage and packaging. So I'm gonna to start to process this now. I think it's about done. The best way to tell is kind of just get down and see if it's still reacting. It probably is deep in the center, but we, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk as I do it and I'll show you what we do with the center anyway. So this is where you wanna be extra careful because this is where you can potentially make a mess, especially if you haven't got tubs at either side. You wanna be super careful because it breaks down so easily, just crumbles apart. So this is the part you want to be really careful, unless you obviously don't mind making a mess. Just pull, pull the secret worktops back out. So a taller tub would be much better, but because I have V70s, there's no real sense in me. Well, actually, I was going to say there's no real sense in me buying uh, more tubs, but I'm actually going to because I'm going to buy this really deep tub where I can just throw five or six blocks in at once so I can do my whole collection of approximately 200 snakes, including hatchlings, and um, not have to worry about it at all falling down the edges. So I dropped a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna rotate this just for camera purposes. Uh, surprisingly heavy because of the amount of water it's taken on. So best way to do this, We're just basically breaking it down with no force, just let it crumble apart because it will come away without any real force. And I'm just, before I crumble it all, I'm gonna show you uh, just how wet or not wet this is. So because the top is, is, is that bit, I'm gonna go to what would be the bottom and I'm gonna squeeze it as hard as I can not a single drip and my hands aren't wet. That's the thing with Rectitude. It absorbs water, but it kind of locks it in. It's almost like it hides it somewhere because it's like, well, why isn't it dripping out? You wet vermiculite or something like that when you're doing your eggs ever slightly too much. I mean, like slightly too much. And you can drip water out of it just by squeezing it. I squeeze that as hard as I possibly can. And I couldn't get a single drip out and my hands wasn't wet after. So you can see how much half a block has done, half, half has done. So now it's getting a bit lower. We can speed up a bit. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring the second tub in 
so I can get on with it and I want to show you what we do with this bit. So this bit, with it being slightly drier, just give it a gentle rub together and it breaks up, no problem at all. Absolutely no, no problem. It just crumbles away. That's what I love about it. The way it holds the moisture and the way it breaks up with ease. So I'm going to try to get a oh, You see, you can't, you can't even pick it up in its, oh, maybe I can, because it just breaks together. And no problems at all. Right, there we go. So now, with this bit, you just want to break it down. This is where it gets a little bit tougher. But the thing you've got to remember is, it is so easy to add water but it's almost impossible to take it away. It's not impossible because someone actually over hydrated it and got a hair dry into it, which I think was a fantastic idea. He, he, he must have wet it too much. He did it in the bath and I think his water was really warm. So it's tepid, it's all about that tepid water. Just needs to be just off cold. Now, because, because this is not soaking wet, I would be happy to give this a little bit more water to, to reactivate it, but because it's crumbling down with no real issue, I'm not I'm not really going to. I'm just gonna crumble it up a little bit and then I'm sorry this is going on a bit long, but I wanted you to see it all so there's so you, you kind of really get to see what it's like. In fact, just because that's a little bit dry, I'm just gonna give it a quick dunk. Just a quick one. Let it drip off a little bit. It should still all its form for a couple of, good couple of seconds. Now, because that's the bone dry stuff, I'm gonna let it drip on that. And I'm just gonna get little chunks out. You can still see that water's really, really clean. So this gives you a good eyesight to just how much um, you get. That's, you know, damn near full. So just to not take it off camera, I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm gonna break this, look at that crumbles. Add a, maybe a two, three second dunk and it's perfect. Look at that. Fantastico. Absolutely perfect. Look at that. So that, that's, that's about how I like it. Just nice and moist to the touch, not too wet. Because, because I don't live in a really hot state of America like some of you guys do. I live in not so sunny York in the United Kingdom. Uh, I, and with it being winter as well. I don't have a very, a super dry room, but it is still pretty dry. So that's it. So now, just, just for video purposes, I'm gonna dump this. I'm probably gonna regret this bit, but I'm gonna dump this into the one tub so you can see just how much you get. Because so many people are comparing it to other products block for block. It's not fair comparison because you get more in Repti Chip. They're saying, oh, I can get three blocks of this for two blocks of this, but it, three blocks of uh, that one, the other brand, doesn't do what two of these does. Fact, not my opinion, fact. So look at the amount. I, I know I'm kind of butchering this part of the video, but look at how much you get. It's just, it's mind blowing that that Come on, don't fall on me. Oh, perfect. Look at that. So, all of that <laughs> came out of one of them. Absolutely fantastic. So, that's how I prep Reptitude, you guys. 10 seconds, no more, in tepid water. Job is a good one. And don't forget, these are really, really nice. So now I'm gonna show you a super cool clutch, but just before I do that, I'm just gonna show you how snakes look on RepTiChip. Cheers.
Hey guys, and I'm back. So here's one of the babies from the Superfly Clown bred to a GHI Lesser Yellow Belly Heck Clown. So with the mum being Superfly Clown, uh, every baby has to be a pastel because a Superfly is a pastel, pastel fire. So a super pastel fire. So this baby, I believe, is a pastel fire GHI Yellow Belly Heck Clown absolutely amazing really really love this snake uh, unfortunately i didn't hit the visual of this but i have hit some pretty amazing stuff so we'll move on to the next one so next up and i believe this is the only female in the group so this will be my keeper yep this is the only female so you can quite clearly see it's a pastel lesser ghi possible i think it is yellow belly could be fire but I don't think it's fire I think it's yellow belly but that head kind of screams fire to me but the sides kind of scream yellow belly with it raised up a little bit but this one's getting kept so I don't necessarily have to be 100% on my ID because I'll never miss sell it because I will breed it before I go love this ringer look at that it's not a true ringer it's just it's pan but it's just it's just amazing beautiful contrast just absolutely smoking what a fantastic snake what an absolutely fantastic snake so now we're going to move on to the visual clown combos and like i said before every baby has to be pastel so this one is quite clearly a pastel ghi clown really like this it has a bit more of a darker sort of almost dirty look to it so i don't necessarily know how it lays. but as ingredients go this is a very powerful snake uh, this will be obviously sold with it being her male. I don't really have much use for him, but just an amazing uh, snake to own and going to be a cool asset to someone's uh, uh, to someone's collection. GHI and Clown. I know I can't say too much, but I know a few top breeders are working with it and they've had some mind blowing stuff. And I was fortunate already on that road, uh, so I'm going to uh, be not far behind them. But also I've got uh, some GHI Heck Clown uh, adults now, so ones I hatched myself uh, two or three years ago. So they'll be playing uh, some major roles in my clown combos uh, in the 2020 season. So next up is my favourite visually. Just absolutely stunning. The yellows are on point. The blacks are super deep. The, uh, the pattern is sort of like it's not like a silver color, like a super pastel clown, like a killer clown. It's more of like a titanium -y gray sort of color. It just gives a real nice, uh, real nice contrast. The blacks are so deep you, in certain parts, you just get this phenomenal contrast, just like you can see there. Just really love this snake. In two minds if to keep it. I'm keeping it because it's beautiful. I'm not keeping it because I need it, because I'm going to keep a more powerful one, which I want to show you next. And it's the next two I need a little bit of help from, so I'll probably send some uh, videos and photos to none other than Justin Gabelka, because he can identify snakes like no one else, or so I've found. So just an amazing snake. Uh, so pastel, yellow belly, GHI, or pastel fire. GHI clown, just amazing, absolutely stunning. Right guys, so this is where it gets really confusing for me. So this is a pastel lesser. I think it's got fire or yellow belly, but I also think it's got GHI and it's obviously a clown. So only one person has said he doesn't see GHI. So I'm in two minds if it has or not, but I really think it has. And absolutely everybody else said, yeah, it's got to be GHI. Look at the pattern, look at how unpredictable it is, look at the borders, etc., etc. So what do you think? Do you think that's got GHI? I'm going to leave this one out because I want to show you the next one while that's in view. Uh, so next one. So this has got a deeper, darker pattern. It's a little bit better contrast. Real like blushed out sides, so I really think yellow belly. It's got to be pastel, so pastel yellow belly. It's got to be lesser, and then I think it's GHI. I don't think this one has fire, and I think that one probably does because of the heads blushed out like a, a fire combo. So, what would you guys think? 
Uh, what, what would you guys say? This has got more of a, a real buttery colour. That's lighter. So I'll get them all out just for a nice little comparison. Oops, sorry about that snake. Right, so let's just get you all out. So I also hatched a straight pastel pet clown, but there's no real sense in showing that off because we all know what they look like. So, beautiful, beautiful colors, look at them. So I'll just kind of get them all together. So check that out for an amazing clutch. My season was saved, uh, finally. I did deserve a bit of a, a bit of a better uh, clutch and this has made up for a lot of a lot of bad luck so just check that out so just amazing from so for your for your darker sort of combos to your really uh, beautiful contrasting ones to your hard hitting clown combos really really pleased about this clutch so that's all for today guys i hope you've enjoyed this video i do apologize for not getting the two minute tuesday out but i'm very 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 busy with it being bonfire night and just having some real uh, nice family time i did aim to do one but i just didn't get around to it so i'm going to be back on it next week so i'm very sorry for letting you down on that but i hope you've enjoyed this video so we've covered some uh ways to process rectiture and we've looked at a cool clutch you've also seen some of my hard hitters that are growing up and some of the ones that i've just made the graduation racks and ready for the 2020 season so if you like this video guys give it a thumbs up if you haven't liked it give it two thumbs down if you haven't subscribed please subscribe i'll talk to you on tuesday cheers guys